thank you very, very much. May I say what I have to say to you today, <clears throat> I hope will be very simple. Because uh, everything that really approaches truth uh, can only do it in a simple way, I think. And uh, like I think Einstein said, make it simple, but not uh, too simple, not as <laughs> not more than necessary. But to find what is necessary, that, that's what I've been trying to do. And uh, I'll show you a little of that today, um, how it is in music, how simple, relatively simple things are the basis of, of the beauty of, of music and uh, what the, how the importance of a particular music um, is not found in great complications, but what we call, what we call, and I make this gesture, like the Dalai Lama once said, I heard him had <laughs> Say, what is the most important thing in life, he said, is to have a good heart. And he put his hand on his heart. And it was, in a sense, very true. Everybody understood what he meant. But it's got nothing to do with the heart. The heart, you know, it's, we are, we are fahexed, as, as, as Wittgenstein called it. We are bewitched by words, and even the Dalai Lama is able to use these words and elo be eloquent, <coughs> kidding everybody, in a sense, but not kidding anybody in another sense. But you don't go to a cardiologist to have a good heart for that kind of a good heart. The Dalai Lama said, well, Go and see your cardiologist. He'll, he'll make sure you have a good heart. No, 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 no. Where then does one, the simplicity lie of this good heart? Well, um, I'm not going to talk to you about that, but maybe you'll see some of that through the music that we will play. <coughs> and uh, so I'd like to start by a little poem. Can we turn on that thing? <coughs> Making light and making darkness. Light is not light, but heavy, as Newton showed in the rotation of a little mirror hit by light. But what makes it straighter than an arrow? No, perfectly straight, following space's geodesic. What pushes it? No, that we know, we think. but still don't know yet how it started so clear in its direction, the direction from the atom where it was born. We don't know what makes it choose a particular direction, the photon. We know there is light as we see, but not what sees inside our brain, that small part that is conscious. But look, we see where there is no light. We see darkness. How is that possible? Our brain has given us darkness. A present. To be present when there is no light. No light. Is that what darkness is? That prevents us from enjoying intergalactic space travel? Light is said to be joy. Revelation is taught by religious leaders. Shall I then compose here an ode to darkness? Who created darkness? It is not nothing. For nothing is what we see behind us. Darkness is. Darkness is made for us, us by our brain. If we knew how darkness is made, we would know all experience, so our inner light tells us. 
Darwin did not teach the evolution of darkness. It was Goethe who taught us first about excitation and inhibition. The twofold unity of the nervous system that enables darkness to exist along the light. The need for darkness shaped from our love of light. The prince of darkness did not know what he was the prince of. The miracle is that the nervous system early on knew that it needed to invent darkness. And darkness only for a small band of frequencies. Cold is not experienced as darkness. It feels different. It feels different. Cold. Only the frequencies are different. But darkness can be cozy and warm. Yet, the radiation of cold is powerful. It can kill you in a jiffy. So we are made to spite logic. Yet, seem logical to love the light because we see. But not the darkness we see. And we ignore that behind us we do not see either as dark or light. That is how we are made entangled. And I invite you today to see with your ears and let our let your eyes rest. But no. There will be slides, and I'm your slide maker besides. So I hope you will enjoy both darkness and light. So be it in my power, you to the light. Now, much of today's talk will be involved with the idea of potential potential. This is a relatively new thing. You know, I, I don't want to bask in the past. In the past. I'm giving you something new, as, um, that more recent stuff, new stuff, new, new, new. So, potential, what is it? Think about it for a bit. Do we know what is potential? I mean, philosophers have picked on certain concepts to build systems of philosophy around beauty, for example, goodness, truth. But no philosopher has created a body of thought around satisfaction, for example. Satisfaction, very, very important function. Uh, capacity of humans and perhaps animals. <coughs> Satisfaction is, is central to experience. But it hasn't been very, st very much studied, very little studied. And not only neglected by philosophers, but many other disciplines. Um, the latest uh, things comes to mind is, of course, the idea of the American dream. A wonderful idea, a wonderful stimulus um, that drives many and one is proud of. Because if you think of ideas, new ideas, as part of the American dream, creation of new ideas, we here are truly in a wonderful position. <coughs>